All right, I should be visible and hearable. So if, uh, if not, let me know. Um, all right, the, the, um, there's a lot of slides here. I'm gonna try and just go through it quickly just so you know I, I don't keep putting people to sleep in the process. Um, the basic agenda here, I'm gonna look over the different radio services, talk about them a little bit, talk about the FCC rules that apply to GMRS specifically. And then some technical information about how the GMS, GMRS frequencies and channels work, uh, answer the question of why should we care about it, and look at some some gear, some nice fun equipment if we want, uh, if you're interested in picking up a radio. Uh, and then a, a last kind of finish up with some programming and other sources of information. So first of all, I, I make no claim to be an expert on GMRS. Um, my introduction to it was simply because I was involved with search and rescue and there was a lot of off-roading groups that were using it. So I thought, hey, sounds like a fun, fun deal. Um, we'll try and check it out. And then ultimately I tried to get my family involved to get them to use radios without having to license them. That failed miserably. Um, but you know, I, I can always hope at some point uh, and, uh, you know, as far as the equipment, I'm, I'm attracted to blinky lights and buttons and knobs and that kind of thing. So I, I like having lots of different kind of radios to play with and look at. Um, I am AI 6Q from the amateur radio side and on the GMRS side, WRFH998. It looks like we have about 14 or 15 people in this group who are licensed GMRS. So that's awesome. And if you guys see anything that you think is, uh, worth mentioning, please speak up. So first I'll start with FRS just because it's it's part of really is kind of part of the same thing. It's a license free radio service under uh, part 95, the FCC. It operates on basically 462 and 467 megahertz. It's power limited to uh, two watts max or half a watt on average. And you know, you guys probably know what the the typical communication profile is here. It's just really short range communications. Um, it's quick and easy. You can buy these things cheaply. You can use them in other countries fairly easily. Uh, so nothing terribly special about FRS. The There are 22 channels, uh, which were shared with GMRS. The middle group, 8 through 14, has a half watt power max, and every other channel is, is a limited to 2 watts. And they have a 12.5 kilohertz bandwidth for FRS, but GMRS is slightly different. One of the unique things about FRS radios is they, the antennas cannot be removable. And the antenna gain has to be less than a half wave dipole. So basically they want to keep you, you know, quiet for the most part. Uh, you know, depending on what you buy, they're super cheap. You can get them for $10.00. Uh, if you look on Alibaba, you'll find hundreds of different models of FRS and GMRS radios, and some of them are like two, three dollars each, so they're pretty cheap. Um, and you can buy ten packs and twenty packs and whatever. So it depends on what you're looking for, but they're they're pretty inexpensive. It's not a super useful service for us. I, I mean, I think we have better. Obviously, we have better resources um, and better usage of these kind of things, but. You know, so it is what it is. Uh, you're you're going to deal with a lot of chatter, right? You're going to hear baby monitors and music playing and children screaming over the the radio and, and the whole bit. Um, you know, typically people, these come in blister packs. People open the blister pack and the first thing they see is a one, a big one on the screen. And, uh, you know, that's how they start using channel one. So channel one typically is the most noisy out of the whole group. Uh, it, it's it's open unless it has a privacy code turned on, and we'll talk more about that in a little bit. Uh, FRS does have some unusual privileges, though. For example, you can use digital data with FRS and GMRS, so you can send location information, you can exchange bidirectionally exchange digital data, text messages, uh, that kind of thing. They can be automated. They can be periodic. Uh, manual, the limit is one second per transmission, not a packet system, of course. And you can use it for one way, you know, bulletins like uh, weather reports and traffic alerts, that kind of thing. Radios are supposed to be part 95 approved. So if you buy a ham radio, which is part 97, you will not be using it on GMRS or FRS and vice versa. 
but we all know that kind of thing happens. And the FCC says recently has said that uh, you cannot have or sell a radio that claims to be both FRS and GMRS, which is kind of weird because they overlap. So I don't know exactly what their point was there other than to avoid having um, you know, equipment in the in the in the rough that's that's trying to do both. So for hams, again, no compelling reason to use it except for maybe family use. But more likely, we will be involved with uh, event programs that do use FRS radios. And they use them because they're cheap and free and easy, right? Um, they don't have to have a license. They can hand them out to the different race people that's involved. So um, you've got you know, eight, the Old, Old West uh, Trails run, the Oriflame that's coming up. Um, a lot of those races, they just have you know FRS radios laying around that they use for uh, the follow-up runners and that kind of thing. Baker to Vegas is an example, uh, which has a ton of different teams. I think they have over 100 teams this year. Every team has a set of FRS radios, and they're all locked down to a specific FRS frequency. And it works great for that purpose because this is a 120-mile run out in the middle of nowhere. And the teams only need to communicate kind of with the people who are running right there within that little window of opportunity. It doesn't need to make it all the way up to Pahrump or Las Vegas, right? So FRS is a good opportunity for them to use uh, a radio that's cheap and that doesn't conflict with all the, the more uh, carefully calculated and curated frequencies. So the, the big deal with FRS radios is the quality varies greatly. You can, like I said, you can go to Alibaba and find really unusual ones that are literally the size of your, your finger, um, but they may not work at all, right? So it's kind of hard to tell what's good, what's not. And that takes us to GMRS. So the idea with that GMRS from the public's perspective was somebody who needed more range or more features than what FRS had it gave people an opportunity to step up and move into a better class of, of radio service. It does require a license from the SEC. It's $35 a sound for 10 years. And if you remember a while back, the fee was $70. And you also may remember that vanity calls, uh, you could apply for a vanity call, amateur call for free. Um, but now you've noticed that the GMRS license is $35 and the vanity calls are $35. So if you're wondering where that dollar amount switched, that's why. So they operate on the same set of frequencies as FRS. So there's some overlap. And that's really where a lot of the confusion can come from is like understanding which channels I can be on and what power and so on. Uh, GMRS ob obviously does have the advantage of being able to use repeaters and a higher power. Normally handhelds five watts up to 50 watts for mobile and base. The license application process, I mean, it's based, if you guys have a ham radio license, you're probably familiar with the licensing, uh, you know, the uh, FCC website for that cores and so on. So just, you already have an FRN, you would go in there, you would apply to a new class of service called ZA and uh, fill out the name and address and all that kind of thing. But it, whatever is basically in your FRN right now, it takes about four to six weeks um, to process and you're good to go. The only thing that's kind of weird about GMRS is you have to be 18 or older. So that, that's not a restriction for us uh, as amateurs. You could be you know 10 years old and get a license, but for GMRS, you need to be 18. And there's an example of my call sign, WR. FH 998, um, not easy to memorize these things, especially because we're used to the pattern we have in amateur radio. Um, I saw somebody who posted their call sign here it was WRTL. Well, that was easier to understand, at least Wordle, I could remember that, but WRFH, I have a hard time with. Um, it does have some interesting license latitude, however, because you get licensed yourself, your immediate family is covered. And this includes like, just about everyone on the planet. So your spouse, your children, they could be biological children, stepchildren, adopted children, um, parents and grandparents, step parents, brothers, sisters, you could have your in-laws be licensed or run under your license. Aunts and uncles, nieces, and nephews. I think the only thing they didn't include was cousins. So maybe because that would be the rest of the planet, I think at some point. 
um, you you basically are responsible to control the radio. And you can actually, if you read the Part 95 rules, it says you can define what each person can and can't do. I think that's meant to just basically keep a, a handle on what, you know, giving it to your kids or something like that. Uh, and then, of course, in an emergency use, it says the FCC specifically says you can use, anyone can use it. The only requirements for identification, just like, uh, I know, kind of like our ham radio identification, first transmission, at least once every 15 minutes, you can use Morse code. Typically, that's on the repeater side. You can't use digital communications for ID. Um, and also, you do have much better antenna options. You, the antennas can be removable. There's no limit to the gain on the antennas, so you can uh, you can put up some good stuff. All right, so let's talk about uh, frequencies and that kind of stuff. Um, this is a list of the frequencies that are available in GMRS. Now, this is this white chart here came from I think Wikipedia, um, and it's got good information in it, but it can it's a, a little bit easier to, to visualize it in this format. And I like to think of these big three blocks. It helps me kind of in my mind, put um, rules around where I can transmit at what power levels and so on. So you've got 22 channels, you got block ones, what I would call channel one through seven. Um, you have a particular power wattage, so FRS, we'll, we'll talk about this in a second, but FRS is at two watts, you were at uh, GMRS, you're at five watts. And then if you look at the block down here, for example, 15 through 22, which is typically where repeaters li live, you can go up to 50 watts. So uh, this little block diagram, uh, and I'll explain where I got this, by the way, um, is kind of useful. The repeater channels are basically the same ones you've got here, 15 through 22. Sometimes they're referred to as R15 or 15R to indicate that it's a repeater and uh, it's a five megahertz up um, transmit on the repeaters. So where I got this information from, uh, this company by two-way radios has a lot of really good radios, um, not only GMRS, but also other services, including HAM. Um, they had this, this quick reference card that I got one year and I thought it was awesome. And um, so I pulled information off of that. I actually reached out to the to the guys that own two-way radios and, and asked if I could, you know, buy some cheap. And they just sent me a whole pile of them. So it's kind of a bummer that we're not in person because I have like a little freebie. There's an eight and a half by 11 laminated quick reference card for anyone who's interested. And I'll try to bring it to the next um, ARS meeting and you guys can just grab one there. It's got a lot of good useful information on it. So we'll, where I pulled some of this information from. So the, the basic service plan for GMRS uh, started out a long time ago. There was only 14 channels. They were later updated to 22. As I mentioned, repeaters occupy that block from 15 to 22, but you can also use them as simplex if you want. Um, you Because they are shared frequencies with FRS to be within the, the limits of the license, you do need to understand where your power has to be set for each ch channel or block of channels. So I call them the, the mantras. The first mantra is channel one through seven allows two watts for FRS and GMRS is at five watts. Channel eight through 14 is always the same. So it's the same. You get a half a watt on channels eight through 14. And in 15 through 22, FRS is still at two watts, but now you are able to go up to 50 watts. Second mantra, the bandwidth. Channels one through seven use a 12.5 kilohertz uh, bandwidth and, and GMS has a uh, 20 kilohertz. By the way, uh, FRS radios typically actually use only about 11 kilohertz because they leave some space on the edge of the, of the band there to not interact with each other. Um, but that's just merely information. Again, channels eight through 14 are the same regardless of which service you're on. And then you're back to the 12.5 and 20 kilohertz. And then the third mantra was the repeaters. Uh, there seems to be some debate out there as to whether repeaters can use odd splits, odd frequency pairs. Um, the It's kind of a license by omission, I guess, question. 
Part 95 specifically says that uh, you will only use designated pairs that are in that list. But some people say that they, uh, they, you know, you can use your own splits. Uh, you can certainly use your own tones to control the repeaters and input and output, and you can have split tones and so on. It's always uh, five megahertz up for the uh, for the transmit, and you can have, of course, have better antennas be amplified up to fifty watts and so on. And then we get into the exciting topic of privacy codes or or tones. This has kind of been an annoyance to me over the, over time, which is why I've got that you know that um, that unhappy face because my face up here is happy. Uh, they they come with different names. Sometimes they're called sub channels. Some manufacturers call them privacy groups. Sometimes they called tones. Most often they're just called privacy codes. Um, I think Motorola, from what I understand, Motorola is probably to blame for this. They changed the private line PL tones to privacy codes for some reason, and it just kind of confused people. Um, but it, but at the bottom line, they are CTCSS codes, and there is somewhat, a, somewhat of a standard mapping. Uh, you also have DCS codes if you're interested in using those, and uh, that was something that was added a few years back as well. Um, I've found over time that these privacy codes are not consistent across radio brands. You'd think that they were, um, but they aren't. And I'll show you an example of that here in a second. Um, the best, in my experience, the best way to assure that you have the proper code is to use a radio that can do tone scanning and then scan it from that radio, from the transmitting radio. That way you know you're at the right tone. All right, I'll move myself back down here, sorry. Um, I just wanted you to see my unhappy face. So this is a normal um, CTS tones, the, the kind of a mapping. So if you look on a, a GR, GMRS or FRS radio, it'll say like privacy code one, two, three, four, et cetera. And you've got the CTS, CTCSS code over here. So that's a pretty standard mapping. And of course, DCS codes also are listed here as well. But now, for example, if you look at... Um, if you look at some RETVIS radios and some and DeWalt radios, which I'll show you a little bit later, they're not always the same. And in fact, Motorola and the DCS codes has this weird little chart. It took me forever to find this dang thing um, where it's got, you'd think that this maps to one, two, three, four, et cetera, right? Uh, let's see, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, but if you look here, the, the DCS code is 51 and then 54 with a 53 in between. And if I go back a slide, you'll see that there is no code, no DCS code between 51 and 53. So it does tend to differ between what radio. So if you go buy a Motorola radio, you're gonna find a DCS code of 53 does not map to number nine. It's actually number eight or number 10, I guess. So it's kind of funky. Um, I don't like it. it. Makes me a little unhappy, but um, you know it is what it is. Basically, if you're going to try and find the tone of a radio that's in use, scan it. All right, uh, repeaters. So uh, the repeater process. I mean, you guys know what repeaters are. I'm not going to go over that. I mean, it, you basically have those uh, eight channels which can be used for repeaters. And some radios will refer to repeater channels 23 through 30. These are not GMRS frequencies. They're really just the inputs of 15 through 22, where you can do simplex. Um, you know, if you see if you see something that says 30 channels of GMRS, just ignore it. It's just a rebadging of of what's already there. The repeaters themselves, um, a lot, some of them are open, some are closed. Um, most of them require some sort of payment and membership to use. You can go to Google search and you can just say San Diego GMRS repeaters and you'll find a list of repeaters. And I'll, I'll go over some good resources in a few minutes here. Um, most of these groups have a website. It can be pretty basic. And I seem to see more Facebook groups for the same organizations than anything. So if you're on on Facebook, you have a good opportunity to uh, take a look at the, the different kind of repeater member uh, groups that are out there. There's a good group called Crest Communications. They manage the Mesa Crest repeater and a couple others. Um, it's managed by an offshoot of an amateur radio club. For example, it is $36 a year. 
Um, you have to visit the club meeting the first time to be voted in. And I, I've heard that you can do it via Zoom, but if not, you're going to go to Corona. And then you have to participate in two events a year. So they're pretty serious about their their repeater. Uh, it's a good repeater, um, but not all clubs have the same kind of requirements. Some just be require that you pay the, the membership fee and you're good to go. Uh, okay, so as I mentioned, the Crest, uh, Crestline one, that's on channel 22. They did uh, have a test PL so you could try out the repeater in the fall, last fall. I think it was in like in November, December of last year. And I've I've been told that they will occasionally pop the test, or put, pop the repeater into test mode so that you can play with it and see if you can reach it from where you are. So that's kind of cool. I like that idea. If so, so they they put it on a PL tone of 141.3. They also have had pretty good success in San Diego. I talked to another ham who said he was in San Marcos and was able to reach the Mesa Crest repeater. I mean, it's up it's at 4,600 feet, so it's pretty far up. Um, but that's you know that's pretty impressive actually for that uh, for that service. They managed the Santiago Peak repeater um, channel 20. That's better for us in San Diego. And then they have a Victorville-based um, repeater called Rattlesnake, which uh, can never seem to hit. There's a, a guy on YouTube, if you know him, his name, he calls himself not a Rubicon. Um, he's an overlander. He's got a repeater up in LA. It's it's free. It's open. <clears throat> no requirement for use. Um, but the language can be really questionable on that repeater. And... Some people get offended pretty quick, and there's a lot of other kind of hacks going on with that repeater, so your mileage may vary. And then if you're going east, there is a, a nice repeater group in Yuma that covers all the way from basically the start of Inland Empire out through Phoenix Flagstaff area. There's just a $36 a year membership. There's no you know fancy requirements. Uh, there's one for Foothills. Uh, they call themselves Foothills 550, which is on channel 15. I don't know what the PL is on that. And then there's a couple in San Diego. One is at Mount Palomar. Uh, that's an open repeater on 119.8 on channel 20. And I, there's another one, uh, SD, SDOR, I think it's called, uh, .com. I haven't tried that one. So there are some good repeaters out there. There's not a ton compared to amateur radio, right? Um, obviously, you'd expect the, the group to be smaller, but they're, they're, they're out there. So my recommendations for kind of the technical side of it, the frequency, the channels, PO codes, honestly, just stay away from everything in channels 8 through 14. You get a half a watt of power. There's no, not a lot of good stuff going on in there. I mean, if you need to talk to somebody just sort of car to car while you're driving, that's great. But otherwise, all you're going to get is, you know, pain and suffering. Um, FRS users typically land in channels one through seven, and then you're going to probably be using repeaters in anywhere from the 15 to 22. Or if you need to use high power, just simplex on those channels, you can do that too. Uh, my other recommendation regarding the, the privacy codes or PL tones is kind of follow your own reliable, memorable tone plan. So, for example, I for a while there, I had a, a tone plan that I followed where it was this, the same channel and tone number. So if it was channel one, I would use tone, you know, CTS -S phone, tone one, channel two, tone two, channel three, tone three, et cetera. Um, that's when I started figuring out that my channel or my tone nine did not match up with other channels like on the DeWalt. Um, so you can do that. But there, there are some good plans out there. Actually, if I, if we go back to the DeWalt plan here, I kind of like what they did here. So they had this is the 22 channels, right? They had um, just basic CTCSS tones, 1, 11, 22, 33. So the numbers are, you know, doubles, double digits. And then they go through the same process, 1, 11, 22, 33, 44, 55, 66, et cetera. So they at least had a, a sort of a plan that I could memorize, which I liked. Oh, and then, um, you know, some of these radios we'll look at have a ton of other channels, right? Not just the standard 22, but they've got a bunch of other, you know, the five, 999 channels. What are you going to do with that? 
for me, what I do with them is I use sort of what I call custom combinations. So if I know, for example, Baker to Vegas uses FRS 13 or ch channel three plus tone 14, then I'll put that in and call it Baker to Vegas. If I know the um, Oriflame uses three and three, then I'll put that in and I'll call it Oriflame, you know, that kind of thing. So you're doing a lot of duplicating of channel information, editing, duplicate, edit, et cetera. Um, okay, so I wanted I wanted to put a plug in for buy two way radios. You can buy these radios everywhere, Amazon, um, you know, just about everywhere. Buy two way radios, I like their website is great. They have a good uh, mix of what you can play with, and I found their prices to be you know just as competitive as everyone else. Um, and it was really nice of them to give us these cards, these reference uh, pages. So. Just hit me up sometime uh, the next time you see me or at an ARAC event, and I'll, I'll give you some of these cards. I think I have like 30 of them. All right, my summary for GMRS is probably the closest thing to amateur radio without the licensing test. You still need to get a license, of course. Um, the equipment actually is surprisingly kind of cutting edge and feature rich which is great. And I, a lot of it comes from, you know, places in Taiwan and China and et cetera, but they do, um, some of them are, are really great. Some of the, the products are awesome. Uh, there's more flexibility with GMRS, especially with kind of your family, if you can convince them to pick up a microphone. Uh, it's a good jumping off point for people to move into amateur radio. And I've seen this on GMRS where people will, be excited about it. They'll go get their license. They'll buy a radio. They'll hope to connect with a repeater or talk to someone. And the first thing they find out is it is not the rag chewing that you would get with um, with amateur radio, right? You're not going to just pop up a repeater and, and talk to a bunch of people. And so they're kind of disappointed. And that gives you an opportunity to say, hey, you know, why don't you think about amateur radio? And I've seen quite a few people make that jump and they're happy about it, right? They've learned, it's come almost like a training ground. They've learned on GMRS and now they can make a move into amateur radio. Um, GMRS radios themselves are not typically used by events group because of the licensing. They're usually using FRS radios. Um, so you can keep up with that. Uh, but it, you know they're fun to have as a backup, um, just experiment with and so on. Why should we, or why should I care? Well, first of all, FRS radios are used a lot in the different kinds of race events that we support. Like for example, the ones I mentioned, plus Baker to Vegas. I've seen parades use them. I've seen other you know, community service groups use them and so on. Um, CERT is a good example of, of a group that uses um, FRS and GMRS radios. Um, let's see. What else do I want to say? Kind of reported or re repeated some of this stuff. Uh, Off-roading groups use these a lot. Uh, they, you know, Offlander or love the idea of a, a GMRS um, group. Um, backpacking and hiking, not quite as much, but you'll still find them. By the way, when I mentioned earlier uh, Search and Rescue, Search and Rescue doesn't use GMRS, but they find that backpackers and hikers do use GMRS, so they're familiar with the radio so that they can often hear them if there's an emergency. Um, so all that said, you know, we can't use our ham equipment or we shouldn't use our ham equipment with GMRS uh, frequencies and rate and channels, but you know, ultimately means you're gonna have more gear. But the upside is that the this stuff is cheap and it's kind of fun to play with. Uh, and then there's other ways to engage here. There's a, a channel 19 and channel 20 with no tone is considered a calling channel. Um, you've heard you may have heard about the 333 structure, the wilderness protocol starting at 7 a.m. monitor every three hours for three minutes, et cetera. Actually, I think it's five minutes. Um there's a group in GMRS that's trying to get a 20 on 20 where you use a PL tone 141.3, which is a 20. 20 on 20 kind of for rag chewing on GMRS. Um, hasn't, I haven't seen a lot of activity there. Um, preppers use these radios. They have their own channels. They like to, to call the prepper protocol, the you know, channel 20, MERS 3, FRS 3. And uh, you, know, you can kind of take it and leave it. Is there any reason for us to have it on our comp plan? Possibly. I mean, again, we're not going to be specifically 
calling it out and using it, I think, but it might be interesting to have some of these out, you know, some of these 20 on 20, for example, out there, just so we know that if somebody had a radio, this is where we might find them. Okay, so let's take a look at some of the radios. Um, I, I'm going to kind of go through this quickly and I'll start from the bottom and, and go up, but I, there's some cool stuff out there. And, you know, I already told you I'm a gearhead. So, all right. So this is an FRS radio. This is a rebadged Baofeng. Um, it's sold by Radio Oddity, but you can also just get the Baofeng G11 version. There's also this version, actually, um, I'm going to move myself over here if you don't mind, because I'm going to block all these pictures. Uh, the There's like, 10 different manufacturers that have this exact same radio with maybe a little bit different buttons. So Retvis has it as the FST1, et cetera. It's a three watt handheld. They're usually sold in a pair, a set or more. Um, it does have some limited range of scanning other frequencies. Uh, the cool thing about it is it's USB charging and it's it comes with all the stuff. I, I don't know why the antenna is removable because that actually violates the, the license rules, but uh, it is. And I found this particular radio just to be a good, solid, basic FRS radio. So I have one in the car. And on the occasion when I can offer my child money, she will use this to talk to me when we're on a road trip or something like that. But it's, uh, you know, it's, it's still kind of rare. 55 bucks will get you a pair. DeWalt makes or did make. Um, a radio called the FRS 800, which is a two watt version. Mm -hmm. And it came in a two pack for about a hundred bucks. Um, now it's running about $120 because it's been discontinued, but it was such a great radio and it was so reliable and rugged that I've heard um, from some of the rumor mills that they're coming back under a different brand name. Like they must've sold the rights to the radio. Um, th this, I can't say enough about the, <laughs> the rugged nature of this radio. I've used it in a couple cases where we have a lot of volunteers who literally like throw it across the room to someone else and it, it never breaks. It never fails to work. Um, it's a, just a great radio and it's got a normal PTT button on the side, but you can also push this big giant button in the middle if you have a glove on. So that's kind of cool. Um, you can still get them though. They're a little bit hard to find, but you can get them. And there's some other, I mean, I'm not going to go into FRS much because it's really not much point, but Motorola has a ton. Motorola has dozens and dozens of FRS radios, but the, getting information about which ones are good and which ones are bad is just a nightmare. So I don't even mess with Motorola too much. Uh, Midland does make some good FRS handhelds. They've got a two pack of a diff couple of different models here. Um, Woshan has their version, by the way, their versions all either end in F or a G, F or F or S or G for G or MRS. And BTEC, which is Baofeng, has a, has a no button version as well. All right, so let's look at G or MRS. This is um, the kind of the basic uh, entry level G or MRS. I actually have this radio right here. I can't really see it. Oh, maybe you can. Um, it, it's a great radio. It's just like solid, kind of like the DeWalt. It does really good. Um, it has a monochrome display. It, it does some some wideband receive. Uh, it's five watts. It's got 200 channels. So you've got your 22 channels and then you can load whatever else you want in the rest, right? You can load up some amateur frequencies to listen to. Uh, but for 30 bucks, I mean, you can't, you literally just can't go wrong. It does USB charge and you can get it with a bigger mic or a bigger battery in a mic for $10 more. Uh, next up would be this Baofeng, the GMS V2. Um, it's a dual band, dual receive, uh, five watt. It's got 200 channels, nothing special here, 65 bucks. And then we get into some more bells and whistles type stuff. This is the talk pod. I actually have this one as well. Um, if you don't like the green, by the way, it comes in like, 5,000 other colors so you can get it even comes in clear if you want to see the guts um, it's a good radio and I, what I like about this one is it's got a lot of really um, excellent menus <laughs> so you'll find that a lot of these are hard to program sometimes this one is really well designed or very good user interface on this thing and it speaks clear English um, which is kind of cool so 
Uh, it's got a it's what I would call ultra wide band receive. So it's got FM radio plus it's got air band and then all these other frequencies you can you can uh, receive as well. 512 channels and a decent battery. TalkPod is nice. There is another radio called the TID radio. It's a 10 watt uh, dual band, dual watch receive. This is the ham radio version that they sell. Um, again, ultra wide band, and it does transmit on amateur frequencies. What's interesting and the reason why I included this is I've heard that they're making a GMRS version of this radio because it's very popular. Um, it's one of the interesting little TID radio likes this whole wireless programming concept. So they have, uh, you can just directly program this from a phone. Uh, and they also offer a little dongle thing you can plug into just about any of these radios that have like the, I guess it's a Kenwood style um, uh, side uh, con connections. So you can program it from Bluetooth on just about any of these radios. But uh, keep an eye out. It'll probably be something like the G8, for example. Um, and they're pretty cheap too, 45 to 60 bucks. So right now this is not GMRS, but it might be soon. All right, so my comments about uh, other frequencies, why should I care about receiving out of band, out of GMRS band um, frequencies? So I use these other radios like these, the, the what is it, TalkPod, as kind of like a separate scanner, right? Um, I can, I have my GMRS frequencies here, but I can also, if I want, just listen to two other, you know, uh, two other amateur frequencies if I need it. So I kind of think of it as having an extension of uh, a radio. Like when I typically do races, I'll turn this one to the FRS channel that the race is using. And then the other one to like a, the two meter um, calling frequency, just so I can listen up and see who's coming in. Uh, they do have, some of them have great receivers. Uh, most have some scanning function, some alerting function, some have groups and banks. And uh, you don't have to worry about, um, you know, transmitting out of band because the only you can only transmit on GMRS frequencies, so they're TX locked elsewhere. And then I can create, as I mentioned before, you can create those sort of custom combinations of things. Like I have one for Baker to Vegas and, um, you know, one for the Aura Flame and whatever. So now let's look at some, some other interesting ones. This is the Midland X... T511, I've got one of these here. What's cool about this is it's got, you know, your typical weather radio and alerting and all that kind of stuff, AM, F, AM and FM as well, and GMRS frequencies, all 22 of them, and includes a, a hand mic and a little extendable antenna thingy, and it's got a hand crank on it, so you can literally, like, use it anywhere it runs off of double a's which runs off of the rechargeable battery pack that comes with it external power cigarette lighter whatever um so it's 100 bucks and that's kind of cool i keep that one at home just in case you know the world blows up and i need to hand crank my radio <clears throat> and now we kind of move into what i would call the mid-grade gmrs radios the Woshun um, 805G and the 905G, they're basically the same receiver or same radio. They both have five watt super het receivers, which is cool, much better quality. Um, but they're just monochrome displays, limited buttons. They're, they have the ability to receive elsewhere, but it's pretty minimal. The 805 is cheaper at 80 bucks. It has 128 channels. And it's sort of waterproof. And the 905 has 256 channels. It has channel groups. And you can see it's got a better display down here, even though it's still monochrome. Uh, it's got the tone scanning. And it has just more bells and whistles. Plus, you can do USB charging with it. Uh, slightly bigger battery as well. So, you know, if you were looking to buy, you just wanted a hardcore uh, GMRS only type radio, I would say one of these two is excellent. They both, um, the Woshans are actually pretty good quality in general. And although there's not a lot of features on here, they're super solid for GMRS. All right, so next up would be this Baofeng GMRS Pro. This one's interesting because it includes um, <clears throat> a data connection. So it's 140 bucks. It's a five watt dual band 
It's got the same sort of wideband receive, has 200 channels. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Six channel banks has got some stopwatch features and that kind of thing, a compass and a speedometer. But in my mind, the cool thing about it is it's got this data connection. So if you've got another radio, another GMRS Pro radio, uh, you can send each other GM GPS locations. You can even send SMS type messages with the app. Um, so it actually will talk to the radio and then send a message like, hey, I'll meet you over at, you know, 46107, whatever. And then you can send the actual information. Um, so that's like pretty cool. I mean, it's getting into the realm of, of could be useful. <laughs> uh, as you can see, there's no big uh, keypad. So you got to do a little bit of fancy programming on it, but um, it's got a pretty cool um, overall feature set. And it's got a big battery, 2,600 milliamp. And the 935G is another step up. Now we're looking at about 150 bucks. Uh, there's a deluxe package, which includes like du dual batteries and some other stuff for uh, 239. A little bit larger wattage, 5.5 watts. I still think it's going to be five. Um, it does have a thousand channels. It's got the programmable um, buttons and that kind of thing. It's got the only thing that this one has that I guess is different is it's got a keypad. And it's got a channel wizard function, which helps with programming from the keypad. So if you need to, um, you know, pop in a new repeater or a new frequency or whatever, you don't have to look through 27 different menus like you usually typically do on like a Baofeng, for example. Um, you can pull up this wizard and it asks you the important stuff and then it programs a frequency for you. And it's got a cool little thing where you can actually see what buttons you've assigned to the fun programmable function keys, because I'm always trying to remember what I put in what key, but this one has got like a little page that pops up and shows you those different things. Kind of neat. And then this is kind of what I would call the top of the line handheld at the moment, the Woshan Q10G, it's 200 bucks, which is a lot. It's a six watt radio. Um, it is ultra wideband. Again, it just receives just about everything, including um, you know some fun little frequencies that we might use. Uh, it even says it has forty receive only CB channels, uh, AM, FM. I'm assuming LSB at USB, but I don't know. I mean, I've not played with it, so I can't answer to that. And they don't have much information there, but it says it receives some CB channels. So who knows? Uh, it has the same sort of features as the earlier one where you've got the GPS location, tracking. Um, by the way, all this stuff has to be across Simplex. You can't be on a repeater. Uh, it's got a caller ID. So if, it, if you know, if you've assigned your name and call sign to a radio, then when you call people, it'll pop up on their display. It's got the same kind of glitzy stuff like clocks and timers and stopwatches and so on and tone scanning. Uh, it's got the dual display, custom channel names, scan groups. This is like the top of the line radio. The only thing funky about it, um, you can't see because I'm in the way, is uh, it has a non-removable antenna, which is weird because GMRS allows you to not have a non-removable antenna. But what I've heard from people is that it's really just loctited in. So if you take a wrench and be super careful about it, you can wrench this dang thing off. But um that's the only complaint I've heard about this radio. All right, let's look at uh, mobiles. And this is uh, starting kind of at the bottom again. This is the DB20G by Radio Oddity. I actually like this one and use it um, in my car. Um, it's really small. Um, by the way, that is not a wireless mic. That's just they chopped off the cable for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, 20 watts, 500 channels. It's got the NOAA weather stuff. It's got dual speakers, both in the handset or the handheld mic and in the radio itself. Um, and you can see it's got a pretty decent display. <clears throat> the 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 only complaint I have about it is you'd think that these up-down buttons move the channel frequency um, display up or down. No, uh, you push these two buttons to get the channels to go up and down and you use this for other stuff. So kind of weird. But I like this radio. It's super small. I can't, I don't have it here because it's in my car, but I'm telling you that it's the thing is about the size of, um, you know, I don't know, two AirPod cases put together. And so it's really nice. <clears throat> and it's just 85 bucks. Uh, next up is this BTEC GMRS 20 watt radio, $140. 
This is interesting because there is a ham radio version of this called the WP9900, which I also have. And it is a triple watch, triple receive frequent uh, uh, radio. So you can see it's got three channels right there. You can set this to any channels you want. So you could have GMRS1, FRS2, and a two meter calling frequency, and it'll be able to receive on all three. Um, everything's managed by the, the mic rather than the body of the radio. Um, this version is just GMRS. The other one is the ham one. Uh, but it's it actually is really neat. I use this in my one of my go kits, one of my small can go kits for my amateur radio version, and I like it. Um, it's supposedly IP67 uh, certified, assuming your car goes underwater. I guess it'll be okay. So that's up to you. Uh, Midland makes a number of GMRS mobiles. They're all excellent. They're all like super solid, but they are literally just GMRS. There's no other features. This one, I have this one. I This is the one I replaced with that previous model. Um, but you can see these things are super small, right? Here's here's how tall this thing is. And here's the, the mic by comparison. So these radios are super small. This one is uh, 15 watt. This is a 275 model. Um, and everything's managed off of the, the mic, which is kind of cool. They have other models. They have what they call their micro mobiles, which are even smaller. And then they have a new one that is their top of the line 50 watt. Um, and most of these come with antennas, by the way. Uh, 50 watt this 400 bucks. But it is, I think, one of the few 50 watt mobiles that are out there for GMRS. And then this is supposedly the best and brightest of all the mobiles. This is a Woshan KG 1000G. It's $400 as well, 50 watts, 1,000 channels, all the same features as a Q10G. Um, and the display is remotable, remotable. So you can remove this display and mount it somewhere else. And you can also flip it upside down if you want. So like if you're in a Jeep or something, you want to hang it upside down, you can do that and it'll reset the display. Comes with all the extension cables and that kind of thing. Um, and what was my comment down here? Oh, they also have a smaller model called the KGX20G, but this one's really kind of the big, the big player. And then I, I think this is what Heather has. She mentioned she's got a repeater. This is the Retvis RT97 repeater in a box. This thing is much smaller than it seems. Um, uh, so probably about the size of a lunch box really. And it's got a little display here that shows the input and output of the repeater. Uh, it's got a connection for your antennas. Um, it, you know, inside it's basically just a couple small radios and some tuning cavities and all that kind of good stuff. Um, has five watt output. It's got a built in sound card, so you can connect it to a Raspberry Pi, for example, if you were doing something automated. You can send data, um, you know, weather information from a Raspberry Pi or something like that. It'll run off anything from 12 volt to 24 volt. You can run it off of solar if you want. A lot of people have connected to a battery and then have a solar charger. And they put that in another box and they just connect up to this little port right here. Uh, of course, you can amplify it. You can use better antennas. Some people swear this thing is awesome. And so you'll see five star reviews. And some people say it's junk and get, get one star reviews. But I don't know many places where you can pick up a repeater especially a GMRS repeater for $399 and play with it. And the the neat thing about this is you could literally take it with a battery, stick it on top of a mountain for an event. And, you know, it doesn't have to be awesome. It can be just good. And you've got a repeater out there. All right. And then one last option, I'll just mention MERS. Um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with MERS, but it's a multi-use radio system. There's no license. You can use it just literally out of the box. There's only five channels. They're all VHF. Um, you might have heard them called blue dot, red dot, et cetera. It's a two-watt radio. Um, the cool thing about MERS is, number one, you don't need a license. You don't need to pay a fee. You don't need anything. You can just use it. Um, and you can, if you buy two of them, you know, $75, you can talk to each other on the road and, and have pretty good success. You don't have to have any worry about giving it to a friend, for example, which is not covered on GMRS. All right, let's talk a little bit about programming. So Chinese radios are obviously um, 
does not not have great manuals um and they typically don't have great uis on their their radios but some of them are good so like this talk pod is awesome i like it um the tid radios are supposed to be really good as well everything i showed you so far either supports chirp or has some sort of software package that comes with it for free uh, some work with um, an app or with Bluetooth, like um, Heather mentioned, she has that little TID radio wireless dongle thing, and she says it works great. Um, and I haven't tried it yet um, because I, I I actually have, I prefer to cut and paste from my other radios uh, rather than doing it on my phone. But the one advantage that you have with these kind of Bluetooth wireless programming is when you're out in the field, you don't have to worry about remembering how to do it. You can just pop it in your phone and, and it'll send to the radio. Um, programming wise, the GMRS channels are fixed. And so typically those radios already know what the power limits are for the particular frequency. So it'll put you in low power for the, the ranges it needs to be in high power and the ones where you can and so on. Some of them have uh, supplemental scan channels and ones that are like the typically take a little bit of setup. Uh, you're going to do some cutting and pasting, I think, at some point. Most uh, most later or newer software packages allow you to pull the data from other internet repositories, kind of like the, um, the RT systems do as well. All right, so where do you find GMRS repeater information? There's a number, obviously, repeater book and radio reference, which you're probably familiar with, are, are, can be used with GMRS as well. There is an overall agency called USA GMRS, which I don't know if they're quasi uh, controlling or not, but they have um, a listing of uh, of different repeaters out there for GMRS. This one, in my opinion, is probably the best one out there, mygmrs.com. You can go look up um, all the good repeaters that are in the area. And I mentioned the ones we already talked about. There's one here for Coachella Valley, this specifically, that area, cvgmrs.com, front range GMRS is another good one. So again, if you just go to Google search and say GMRS repeaters in El Cajon or whatever, right, you're going to probably get some hits and you can find them. A lot of them will report back to mygmrs.com. Other resources, if you're interested in learning more, like I said, Facebook has a lot of GMRS themed groups. Um, you can go to the FCC website and look up people by their call sign. You know, that's basically a public resource as well. It doesn't have a, a QRZ, uh, QRZ type website, but you can do it on the FCC website. Reddit has a lot of good discussion groups on how to utilize GMRS, especially with groups and events. So there's some good information there if you want to go be a part of that and just like learn more about different groups are using them. Uh, a lot of local CERT groups use those radios. Um, San Diego CERT, I know, has their own communications plan, and they have reference to those radios in their communication plan. As far as equipment goes, YouTube is kind of the go-to place for reviews. There's, uh, I mean, you'll see like just about every day there's a new review of some piece of uh, GMRS equipment out there, so you can go watch videos to your heart's content. And then, of course, if you join a local repeater group, you'll have opportunities to meet with other people as well. I don't know about driving to Corona, but you know you can you can find some people locally. So my grand summary for all this is: I view FRS as a tool to help me with events primarily. Right? I don't I don't really use it. Um, I wouldn't put my family using it. I would probably just use GMRS, um, but when you're working with other events and public groups and nonprofits and so on, they typically are using FRS. So think of it as a way to better assist that group you're helping with. On the GMRS side, you can look at it for just your own hobby. Like how can I support my own interests and my own hobbies? Um, maybe I'm part of an overlander group or something like that. And of course, if you're like a gearhead like me, you're into equipment, there's lots of fun radios to play with. Um, my only kind of, Final thought here is keep an open mind about GMRS. It's not it's not amateur radio. We all know what amateur radio is, um, but it's still decent, right? Don't knock the people who are out there, especially the non hams, um, who are trying to learn and starting with GMRS because really we can pull them into our world um, 
based on the learnings that they've gotten over time through GMRS. So I think of it as a stepping stone to get more people into amateur radio. Uh, and then I, I was kind of keeping an eye on questions. The only question that came up um, was, does GMRS use digital modes? They allow that limited use of digital um, that I mentioned before, like for you know uh, GPS locations and small text messages and that kind of thing. But other than that, there's not much going on with digital. And I'm happy to answer any other questions if people have them, or if you're an expert in GMRS, I'd love to hear your comments as well. Hey, F6 GM question. So the Anytone radios, uh, A68, 878, um, are I heard I believe that they're part 90 and part 90 or part 95 and number and 97. So they are available for GMRS. Yeah, I didn't include any of the Anytones. Um, I probably should have. Uh yeah, I've heard the same thing. I and I've heard that um there are a couple other manufacturers that are trying to do the same sort of thing. I don't know where TalkPod, I don't know who TalkPod is, but they are aiming for that same kind of route. Um, I didn't include any tone because I wasn't sure about their, um, you know, their whole focus has been primarily on DMR lately. But yeah, I've, I've heard the same thing. I just don't know whether it's true or not. So. Can you use a ham 440 band antenna for GMR? You probably could. I think you're going to have to tune it, right? Uh, it's not the, um, it's not going to be right exactly on the same frequency, but uh, yeah, there's no reason why you couldn't. Yeah, and a lot of these radios, <laughs> so, uh, you know, keeping to the letter of the law, um, you know, we can use our radios uh, for amateur radio, and these are radios here can be used for GMRS. But obviously, there's a, a fair amount of overlap in what is possible, especially if you have um, access to some hidden features in your radio. So a lot of radios can transmit and receive in either the amateur radio bands or the GMRS bands. Um, yeah, I won't say much more than that. Other questions? Probably a silly question. Are there vanity GMRS calls? Can you get away from that pattern? <laughs> probably not i wish no i've I've never seen any but it would be kind of interesting yeah well there was one website that did say you could apply for a specific call sign in gmrs but i was never able to see that I, I'm personally so i don't know if that's true or not i bought two of the dewalt's for 150 bucks off of amazon yesterday yeah, like I said, they're still out there, um, and they're, and they're they're really solid radios. They're just uh, be, the only thing you have to be aware of is that they have a slightly different uh, tone scheme in some cases, and uh, but doesn't and and they are literally discontinued. But they're supposed to be coming back. I heard from um, actually it might have been the buy two way radios guys that. Uh, that they were potentially coming back under a different brand name. But I have, that was uh, last year, and I haven't seen any progress on that. I mean, they're real popular with, obviously, the construction crowd because it's got the DeWalt name and all that. But I think they targeted their market well, right? They got that big fat button on the front with people with gloves on can use it and so on. Uh, good morning, Bruce. This is Patrick, K6PFG. Hey, Patrick. Uh, well, first of all, I want to thank you for the presentation. Are you a part of a group that uh, utilize uh, GMRS on a routine basis, or is this something you just use for family use? Yeah, just just for my own my own purposes. Again, I can't get my my girls to pick up a radio if it kills them, um, so don't really use it that way. Uh, the only times that I've ever um, no, I'll just say that I, I don't, aside from my own personal use, I haven't really done anything more with it uh, other than like maybe on the search side. That was about it. All right. Thank you very much. Hey, Bruce, could you stop share screen, please? Yes. Sorry. So we'll uh, see this full version of you. Oh, yes. All my glory. Any other questions? 
Well, I mean, with with 15 of the 40 or so people here being licensed on GMRS, I'm sure we've got a good um, a good range of experience and knowledge. So it sounds like we uh, um, we really have a good cadre of people that people can go to to ask questions and get answers. And if not, I think we're good. Thank you, uh, Bruce. Yes. This is uh, Roger, KF6HBU, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm also affiliated with uh, Southwestern React, and we use, uh, when we're doing uh, an event that's spread out, uh, some core pockets of uh, activity, uh, we'll have a, um, a, we're using a repeater that, of course, makes that work very well in the amateur band, and then uh, the individuals will carry an FRS where there's more than uh, one of them at a, a site so that they can move about the site and talk to one another uh, and not tie up the operating channel with uh, uh, unneeded uh, chatter. So uh, sometimes it works well to have both when you're working in an event that's spread out. Yeah, that's actually a good observation. In fact, when we do these races, uh, the foot races, you know, the, the follow-up runners will use like an FRS radio and they're way out in the field, right? They're 10 miles, 10, 20 miles away. Um, and it, often it is, you can, if you were out there where one of the aid station is, you can probably hear them and maybe even talk to them on FRS radio or GMRS. Uh, but when you're back at like net control, you can't hear squat. However, the GMRS radio, because the antenna can be removed and you can put a better antenna on it, you could actually use that in conjunction with your other, you know, amateur radio, your net control responsibilities to try and keep an eye on what's going on out there. Um, you just need a better antenna for it. The uh, other, this is Roger continuing. Uh, the other thing is uh, we could put the amateur station uh, at a good spot for that particular location that was not actually right at the location. So it allowed uh, the uh, people down in the hidden zone to talk up to the guy that has the uh, amateur radio and then he could put it uh, on the uh, established net. Yeah, that's a good one, yeah. Okay, I see Heather posted a link to that wireless adapter, the TID radio thing. Uh, I think it's like 25 bucks or so. It's pretty cheap. Uh, I guess that's for me, for me, Rob, Dave. So I'll hand it back. <laughs>